I don't know about you, but I was brought up with the belief that no matter what type of job you have, you give it your absolute best. You show up, you show up on time, and you put your all into that position. Sadly, that's not always the belief others have in today's workplace. So what's a childcare owner to do when she's in need of an all-star staff inside our childcare business? Especially right now, um, we're in the middle of a hiring crisis in the childcare industry and you can't afford to lose any more staff. Meet me inside tonight for this week's episode of Monday Moves to find out how you can create tips, strategies, and policies that will help you create that all-star team that you need inside your childcare business. your first time joining me, welcome. I'm Nikki B, the founder of ChildcareNinjas.com, and I help women go from exhausted childcare boss to confident and successful childcare ninja. If you're ready to go from being exhausted to being confident inside your childcare business, then you'll want to join me each Monday as I come in here and release a new video to help you make childcare ownership simple, fun, and successful. Right now, Hiring inside the childcare industry can be a little tricky and a lot of frustrating. Okay, yeah, no, terrible English, but you get the point. On one hand, you have the media that keeps telling us there's a childcare crisis, like we didn't know that. But you also know that you can't afford to be like McDonald's and you don't have the luxury of just hiring anyone, right? On the other hand, you possibly have enough staff, but it's more about getting the right results from that staff. So maybe you picked up on the trend of call-offs, right around payday, things like that. Or maybe the cell phone, <laughs> the usage has just gotten a bit out of control. Let's have a look at some strategies tonight to turn your team around and get the results that you really want. Because you do, you want an all-star team inside your childcare business. Oh, and by the way, before we dive deep, stick around, okay? If you're interested in getting your hands on some of the tools that I use inside my own childcare business to help create a positive, organized staffing funnel along with a hiring process that helps me hire and um, staff my childcare business without all those, you know, staffing blues, we can kick those to the curve and you can too. Stay with me for that. First things first, child care boss. No, and I mean absolutely no finger pointing. Keep in mind that when you point your finger at someone else, there are three fingers pointing back at you. And what I want you to do is focus on the behavior, okay? What behavior is currently driving you insane inside your child care business that needs resolved? What new behavior would you like to see? These are the things you want to think about. You want to start off with looking at that behavior that's driving you insane because that behavior <laughs> is causing a result that is not what you want it to be inside your childcare business. But first off, the big thing is recognizing that it is a behavior. So we're not going to attack the team member. We're going to attack the behavior together. Okay, so um, first things first, focus on the behavior, okay? So once you've figured out what that behavior is that is driving you insane, now you wanna look at what type of behavior you would like to see, okay? If you have that um, team member that is calling off around payday all the time and, and you don't wanna see that, Then let's look at some things. Now that you know what it is, you can begin to look at what it, the behavior that you do want to see come out of that, um, that team member, okay? Um, have you previously addressed this behavior is another thing you want to consider. Um, sometimes we think that we've talked to our team members about behaviors and um, things that they're doing that are driving us insane and that we really want to see a different result with. But um, 
in their eyes, maybe we haven't actually talked to them about it. Um, and I'll give you an example because Sometimes what you may do is if you see, let's say you see a team member on the phone, um, you may say, hmm, that must be real interesting. Or you'll crack some kind of like joke maybe. Um, but that to that team member may be like, oh, well, she saw me, she caught me, um, <laughs> you know, but she didn't really say anything because you weren't matter of fact about it. So one thing you definitely want to do is make sure that you officially address that behavior that you don't want to see, okay? Make sure that they... There's no room for them to say, well, you never said anything. So um, it's very, very important that you make sure that you have officially told them, look, I do not want to see your phone out while you're on the floor with the children. And this is why. So we have to make sure that we leave no room, you know, for an accident to happen because we were focused on the phone. Things like that. So make sure that you're matter of fact about it not mean, not rude, just matter of fact, okay? Um, but make sure that they absolutely know that, hey, <laughs> we cannot do this, all right? Um, next thing, and don't sugarcoat it, be matter of fact. Next thing you wanna do um, is think about, do you need a policy to address the behavior? Sometimes, you know, it's just a simple, let me just mention this. Let me make sure that they, you know, like I said, know that this is not the outcome. This is not the result. This is not what I want to see going on. And that can be the end of it. Sometimes you might need to put an actual policy in place, especially if, let's say, going back to the phone example, there are maybe more than one team member. Maybe there's more than one team member that is, you know, using the phone a little too much while on the floor with the kids. Um, and um, so maybe it does need to be a policy that is actually put into place and put into your um, team ham handbook and trained and, and talked about and, and um, explored with your team members so that they know that there's absolutely a, you know, if you choose to have like a no cell phone tolerance on the floor, then that's in play and they know how to handle that. If they have an important call that they absolutely have to take, because let's be real, sometimes we do. Um, our team members may have children that are in school while they're working. So, um, you know, how are they gonna handle that? Put that into a policy and make sure that everyone's aware of how that works. So if there needs to be a policy, make sure you put one in, but also make sure that everyone knows how that policy works and make sure it is written. It's not truly a policy until it's written, <laughs> okay? Um, also, will you need to create a training to get the outcome or the result or the behavior that you desire. So do you need to do a full-blown training on it? Or is it something that, like I said before, you can just kind of mention and say, okay, this is what I need you to not do, or this is the result that I would like for to see. Um, this is the outcome I, I need to get. Um, how can we do this? And what can I do to help you get to this outcome or this result? So think about it in those terms. Maybe we need a training. Maybe we don't. Not everything needs a full-blown sit-down training, but there are times when we definitely need to do that. So really think about these different things that you want to implement and these changes that you want to make. And if there needs to be a training, by all means, create one and get it done, okay? When you do want to begin seeing um, these new results, you need to make sure that you create a clear deadline with the team members. Make sure <laughs> that they know, okay, this is what the new policy is gonna be, if it's a policy that you're setting in place, but make sure that they are clear about when you expect for these changes to take place. If it's immediate, it's immediate, and that's all well and fine, but you also, if it's something that is gonna take, you may be creating a training around it and having a training date, then you need to also give a deadline as to when you expect for these changes to be made so that you can start seeing these outcomes and seeing these changes take place within your team members, okay? And then also consider how will you follow up? How are you going to uh, um, address 
the changes once you've set the deadline. Um, will it be individually? Will you pull them in individually into your office and say, here's um, where we started, here's where we're at now, um, tweaks needed or not needed, et cetera, et cetera. Or will it be one of those all important big team meetings that you put together and you address everyone at one time? But however you decide to follow up with you know, how things are going, just make sure that you have a plan to do that. Uh, you know, I'm big on planning. So <laughs> make sure that you put a plan in place as to how you're going to follow up on the results that you an anticipate and expect for your team members to make um, in the changes. And some other tips to help you create that all-star team, um, you might want to include um, making sure that your staff understands their roles. Do not assume, and this is a huge mistake that we make, that you gave them the job description and they know what the job is. Um, <laughs> sometimes, you know, things change. Um, sometimes roles change. And so you want to check in on your team members from time to time, make sure that they understand and continue to understand what their role is inside um, your child care business inside of the team. Um, make sure that you are checking in with them and, you know, checking up to see if there's anything that you can help them do to make sure that they can fit into their role better. Okay. Um, like I said, don't assume <laughs> that the job description covered everything. Okay. Um, check your emotions at the door. Yes, I said it. <laughs> okay. We all have bad days sometimes. And, um, sometimes we just need to take a deep breath and acknowledge the fact that, you know what, today it's really not them. It's me or it's you. Okay. It's one of us. <laughs> Regroup, have a coffee, have a latte and get back to work with a smile. Don't make it a big deal. Okay. But definitely check. And then finally, I would say, and this is a ninja tip, tune in to your environment. What? <laughs> Does the setup of your child care space invite um, behaviors that you don't want? You know, sometimes it can be something very, very simple and you don't have to like put a whole, you know, policy into place or something like that. But it could be a simple strategy inside your childcare space where you maybe flip the desk a certain way so that um, it's not so comfortable for that team member to sit at that desk and kind of have the phone down below them. If they are sitting where it's very open and very visible to be seen or caught on the phone, <laughs> then that behavior can kind of in the back of their head kind of be like, oh, I better not do this because she'll probably catch me. Uh, um, this is not the right time. Maybe if it's important, then I need to, you know, maybe switch off with a team member and, you know, exit the floor for a moment and handle this, but that type of thing. But sometimes it is very much about some of the environment or the, the way our environment might be set up. It invites behavior that um, we may not like or that drives us insane. Like, you know, that table that sits right by the door where the staff comes in and everybody sits everything down there. <laughs> you know, their lunch, their drink, their coffee, everything goes right down there. And you walk in and you're like, why is all this on this table? You know, because we sat it in a very, very easy spot for them <laughs> to just kind of dump everything, you know, same thing with the kids, right? So think about things like that. And um, if it's something very simple like that, you can just truly just move it, change it, um, take it out if you don't need it. But there are small little things like that that can just easily change the behavior without you even having to say anything sometimes. Who knows? Might work. Take a look around, see what bothers you, see what's driving you insane and why <laughs> okay there you have it ninjas <laughs> my work here is done or is it um seriously there are a lot of strategies and tips to help you create an amazing team inside your child care business um without becoming the warden okay who wants to be a warden so um 
just hopefully these are a few that can really help you really start thinking about some of those things. But um, I did give you a promise that I was going to share with you some of the tools that I use myself. And so you can definitely find those down below in the description box and um, just click on the link and you will have access to all of those free little resources so that um, you can begin to not be stressed out about building strategies and policies that will help your child care team just be completely amazing. Okay, parting is such sweet sorrow. So if you enjoyed tonight's episode and got some value, make sure you give us a thumbs up down below. And if you want to hang out some more with us, make sure you go to childcareninjas.com. Okay, I'll see you next week. And remember ninjas, you got this. Hey there, check out these amazing videos to help you on your child care journey to success. See you soon.